Hello guys and welcome back to the second episode of Garuda, our Thai inspired coaster area which is in fact a hybrid coaster and guys um, I'm so happy to finally have him here on my channel and um, give him a very <laughs> warm welcome, here he is, the amazing Silverette. Thank you, thank you, it's too much of an honor man. It's, it's amazing to finally be on your channel after we've talked for so long and we've talked so many times, done all of this stuff together and already have these videos up on my channel. It's good to finally be here. Yeah, I'm so happy as, um, as we've talked about a lot of times beforehand. Um, we, we plan to do this like since Gamescom and all the like, small projects in between kept us from doing it. And I'm so happy that we are also now on my channel. And in today's episode, just to... to explain a little bit what we are going to do. Uh, we are going to build a Buddha statue and start off right away with this gardening part, which I think you really like, Sylph, right? It, it came in... Yeah, yeah. It was like... I've seen it, I've seen it before, um, but it's, it's something which I just love the way that you've made all of these things using the smallest of details, which you didn't really see coming beforehand, or at least uh, this is, for me, the second time I'm looking at the time lapse, and just the use of the small details in the game to make custom things, like the statue which you're working on right here, uh, which is going to be finished in a couple of minutes, and it's going to look great and be made out of all these weird pieces, like you're sinking the signs in and using treasure chests for decorations, everything is so cool. And uh, for me, it's it's really the way that you're using all of the small scenery pieces to work on the detailing that I really love about this garden. Yeah, and I, I actually have to say, uh, when I was building it, I wasn't expecting that it would you know, like um, come together uh, like this good. Um, not not telling that it is too good, but um, kind of. Uh, I've been there just a few months ago, and it really felt like when I was taking the screenshots to show you, it really felt like yeah, that's really like the photos do look like. Um, and it's also due to like all these, uh, it sounds weird now, but all these winter pieces because they really do help to make it oh, uh, yeah. like Asian style with all these gold and, and yeah, like glowing um, coloring, I don't know how to, to say it in English, but you know what I'm pointing at, like all these small pieces. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely agree, especially the very small gingerbread pieces are amazing. You can use them in so many different ways and they're some of those really small details which because of the, the versatile building systems in the game, you can do so much with. Yeah. And I think it makes them great at everything. They're pretty good for winter theming, I guess, but they're fantastic for everything yeah, that's else. It. Uh, to be honest, the first thing I used the gingerbread for was like um, making a flower bed because uh, actually when you're going to uh, build like small flower bread uh, beds for like on your main street um, it's pretty hard to go with like the ground texture because you will have to leave open uh, a little space where you can have the ground texture in and that kind of annoyed me so I made the flower pots and used gingerbread to yeah like make it seem like there would actually be earth in it which does oh that's that's pretty smart yeah I, I think I've um, actually heard a bit about that as well so did you use like some of those gingerbread wall pieces for the the soil yeah that's it right all oh, right that's pretty yeah, handy and then you, you just think in those lovely new um color colorable color like well these flowers you can recolor <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and yeah actually it, it worked pretty well and i'm really happy that i can do this with my main street which will be i think yeah it's the one in camel kingdom i haven't shown that yet but it's to be honest that's a weird project i'm jumping from one area to the other but anyway <laughs> that <that's, laughs> uh, yeah i kind of changed something um from from the alpha stages to now i've got plenty of projects running but it really does help me to just jump from one project to the other and get fr fresh ideas um i really like that it's maybe not that structured anyway, but yeah. But uh, just back to this um, Buddha statue over here. Uh, the the fact that I try to do all this kind of um, yeah statue pieces with these three D or simple shapes uh, parts, uh, it was really hard to be honest. And I would love to have some more textures for those three D shapes. It would be really cool to have like. Uh, flat textures, glossy ones, or maybe even like darker ones uh, that don't glow or that have not that kind of shiny texture on it. But anyway, for the Buddha itself, it worked pretty well, I think. Yeah, I definitely agree, though. I, I also agree that 
it's one of the things which I kind of dislike about the primitive pieces. I mean, they're, they're primitive pieces after all, so they have to be as versatile as they can be. But the lack of texture is definitely quite hard because you're you're trying to get it in there with like uh, intersecting the different pieces for the legs to get some clothy textures in and putting all the different pieces together to make hands, which by the way, making hands is the worst thing in anything ever. It's so hard yeah. to get it right. Um, and, you know, especially these primitive pieces make it super difficult to make anything that looks like what you're trying to make if you're making something like a statue right here. Um, so I think you're doing a great job. It's just, you know, those pieces are, are very difficult to work with. Yeah, of course. I mean, like, um, they have a certain purpose, and if you use them for this purpose, they are perfect. Uh, but if, if you True. want to, like, do a little bit of abstract work with them, um, they kind of fail because of their glossy textures. A at least that's my opinion in some some things I've used them. Uh, you can always use them for like anything um, covering up and so on. Um, but as soon as it comes to really detailed texturing, um, I kind of try to use different uh, pieces than those primitive shapes. But anyway, there's hope in it. Uh, I don't know if you've seen that, but I, I just... I actually don't know why I did this. It was like uh, when I had university and in the evening I was kind of bored. I uh, rewatched the interview with uh, John Laws um, when he was talking about the first alpha before it was even out. Uh -huh. And uh, in the background of this video, you can see like a statue, which we don't have in the game yet. And I think from, from I, I just took a, a still of it and I think that this actually, uh, there already were like these kind of simple shapes. Uh, and then he said, while going uh, over the stage, he said, well, in the final game, or maybe in a later stage, you will be able to choose the texture out of this. And then the wood will be uh, looking so awesome because it's... Wow. And I thought like, uh, when, well, back then, you kind of, yeah, well, you just, uh, just didn't get it because he was talking like so abstract about the game, which you haven't had your hands on. But uh -huh. looking at it now, it really could be that they are planning to get in some different textures for them. And that would be a big change in a, in a positive way. That, yeah, that sounds amazing. I never realized that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I always uh, thought that the art primitives were something that was just kind of added during the later updates. Because this was added in quite a late stage of the game, or at least the development of the original game. Um, so I kind of felt like they were sort of a late addition to the responses yeah. of the community for wanting to have more flexibility. But what you bring up is actually a very interesting point. Yeah. I wonder if that's yeah, something. Yeah, I, I thought so the same, uh, to be honest. And we were told like this also on Gamescom. So I kind of believed in, and maybe it's also true that in the way they are now, it's really down to all the builders in the game. But maybe they had kind of like, for example, like their pieces they used to build those pre-built 3D objects in the game might be also like with simple shapes for example like in 3ds max or in sketchup or in maya or you always start with like these simple shapes you know maybe this was kind of yeah. something like this like a statue which wasn't finished at that stage um and they figured it could be a good way to develop anyway i'm so happy to have them in the game just maybe to make that point yeah yeah same definitely i always give them I always give them a bad rep because they are kind of glossy, which makes them less useful for, say, less generic kind of things. But they are beautiful for supports or making any kind of more cartoony or stylized uh, kind of art piece. It's um, it's it's just the, the texture, which can sometimes be a bit annoying if you're trying to do more with these things than they are originally supposed to do, uh, which I guess is kind of what you're doing with Buddha here. Yeah. Uh, it obviously is. Maybe I'm going to do something else in the later stage uh, to make the face a little bit better. Um, but I figured that um, for the Buddha itself, I didn't want to get into with too many different uh, textures. I want to have those glossy uh, kind of Christmas things for uh, the golden uh, head part. And I, I, I also think that I will sing in some more golden parts on this kind of, um, yeah, I don't know what it is. Um, those kind of uh, tissue he's wearing, I don't know, but that's it. I didn't want to have more um, different textures on it because if you look at real stages, they always are kind of um, very, very simple in the way they are textured. 
So that's yeah, that's true. The way, yeah. Um, yeah, and actually, I'm also very happy about this kind of base for um, the Buddha because I normally don't start with doing a base, but at this time I, I had an idea in mind where to put it later on, and so it had to fit onto these uh, six um, square tiles of the grid. And ah, yeah, there, there we are with those um, little golden uh, details on, on, on the body. That's the only thing I was doing there. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, back to the ground or uh, the base of the, um, of the statue. I'm, I'm very happy that I could fit it into because sometimes I really do have problems with those simple shapes in terms of their size because they actually don't have um, the size of one uh, grid part of, of the grid. They are kind of a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. Something like this. Oh yeah, I get what you yeah. mean. Yeah, and uh, I think now we are going into the gardening part, part of this uh, whole thing. And um, I'm pretty sure that you you even didn't see it right now. Am I am I right? Uh, no, this is actually my first time uh, looking at this footage. I guess it's something that we should talk about because it's kind of, for us at least, it's an elephant in the room. Um, <laughs> I'm actually looking at the time lapse right now, which is not usually what we do. We usually kind of have the time lapse and just tell each other what's going to happen and just have a general laid back kind of commentary over it. But in this case, uh, Rudy already made the complete video, uh, but our audio of the last recording for some reason uh, was completely screwed up. Um, well, we kind of know the reason, I guess. In any case, um, the audio from me was exporting at a very low bit rate, so my sound was awful. And on my side, for some reason, and I have no idea what this was either, uh, Rudy's sound was sometimes really loud. So we had messed up sound recordings and had to do it all over again. So basically, now we're both looking at the final video and looking exactly what you're looking at every fraction of a second yeah. here. So, um, yeah, we're just now getting into the garden, which is a part which I haven't seen yet. Well, I've, I've seen what it looks like in the end, and I definitely know how great this is going to become. I haven't seen how it all comes together, though. I did love, by the way, the way that the Buddha comes together, like the way that the statue eventually ended up fitting on the foundation, which ended up fitting on that little, like, uh, what was it? Six by two kind of yeah. base, which you set out earlier was super oddly satisfying. Everything just works together so perfectly. Yeah, it, it gave me also a feeling of playing Lego again, <laughs> like this. When you, mm -hmm. when you, you know, all these um, old Lego, um, how they're called, um, manuals, and and when you're told to build, like first of all, the the top part and the lower part and the middle part, and in the end, you put them all together, and it's like, wow, I'm I'm done. That's exactly. It. Yeah. Like when you're yeah. still putting like the individual parts together, you have like no idea yeah. what's it even gonna look. And eventually, somehow it fits together, and suddenly you see the picture. Yeah. That's kind of what this right, is. Yeah. And uh, here we go into making something which I was really looking into. Um, I made some custom foliage, so in this case, some trees, uh, because I was figuring that in um, yeah in the actual park I've been there in Thailand, um, there were so many like trees and stuff like really what you wouldn't expect from from Thailand. It was like uh, really kind of a forest which we also used to have uh, over here but then again uh, there are so many like really exotic plants and stuff like uh, this in it and so I wanted to make kind of an, a mixture uh, over here and yeah I just figured I had to do some some trees on my own to to make it fit quite well with all these palms and little palms and yeah ground texture and so on. I think it, it works great. Also, the way you made that flower bed was really great. Just saving the entire thing at once and putting all the flowers in there is a great way to make use of like the way that we can select multiple pieces yeah. at a time. It's just efficient working methods look Definitely. so good. And um, uh, to be honest, yesterday I figured a new trick <laughs> I, I haven't thought of before, but the thing, mm. uh, I, I don't know, I think you we are really um, also into this kind of problem. When you're doing like domes or really rounded shapes and you prepare just one tile of it to copy it around later on uh, and, you've, and you've yeah. got some details, you know, um, and you have already started to build the entire thing and you're, fuck me, I have to do it in all of these tiles again. So you've got two different methods to do. Either way, you go in each of them and put in some more details, or you just finish one again and then copy them around again. Um, but what you can actually also do is if you have just a small part, for example, like um, add another um, level of the building to it because you figured it was too, uh, too small, then you can just go and um, 
save the the upper part of the building as one single building, remove all um, gritty parts so that it's just uh, scenery and then move it back again into the other building and then you can copy it around again because we have this lovely new feature that we can actually put in all scenery which is close to a building into the building so that oh yeah i i get what you mean so basically you separate it from the building in the in the in the first place and then um you put it back into the building at the end yes exactly like this and like in the middle, you just have the free form scenery, which you can rotate in any way you want yes, to. That's it. And so you can. Oh, that's yeah. Cool. And then you can make use of the grid function, but also of the free form function within the building. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I, it was just like an accident because I was like uh, working on one tile for like one hour and then was like, OK, let's have a look how it does look. And oh, no, I forgot something. And I came up with this idea and it worked. And I was so happy that it worked because it saved so much time. Dude, exactly. Like half of the work of doing this kind of stuff is really, uh, or, or maybe not even half of the work, maybe like half the creativity of it is finding out ways to do things in a very yeah. quick and kind of efficient manner. Uh, not that I'm super passionate about this or anything. Uh, it's just, it's just a lot of fun to do and it definitely saves you a lot of time eventually. And I think you can do a lot more if you think of creative ways and, and kind of see it as a puzzle to try and solve just the idea of building something rather than just trying to make something look good and really see it as both the challenge of making something that looks cool in the end and trying to figure out the best way to get there. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, though I have to say just one thing, I don't know if you have the same problem, but I think because a lot of people seem to have that problem. For some reason, if I do try to move um, a group of pieces, somehow the axes are really fucked up. I don't know what it is. Yeah, but I have the same thing. And, and it's also at the beginning it was just within the building. But in the meantime, I also have it with like buildings themselves. So like I can't move those buildings um, on one axis because it's slightly tilt. And then I have to, well, yeah, just fit it in again and again and again. And it's so annoying. I've, I've no idea what it is. And then I, if I do save them as a blueprint, put it in back in the park and move it again, then the axis is somehow normal again, which is... Oh, I haven't had that issue. That's so strange. But I, de I definitely have the issue where sometimes if you have scenery pieces without a wall piece and you want to move them with the 3D gizmo, they can be very weird on the on the axis of the map, which is also kind of, if you're struggling with that, I really want to make sure that you have the 3D axis like, correctly in all cases. Uh, what you might as well do is just build a building exactly parallel to um, the maps of the game, so exactly parallel to the world axis, and just build the entire building on the world axis. And once it's done, you start rotating it in the way you want to, which is a lot harder to work with, uh, but what you need in the park eventually. That's something which can definitely help yeah, as well. Definitely. Um, that's absolutely right, yeah. Uh, it's a good idea. I, I just did it once, I guess, but I could look into doing it more often, by the way, because that seems to be pretty handy as long as we do have this issue. Um, so basically, but one thing is this kind of uh, fence I'm doing over here, which I'm pretty happy with because I use this kind of sugar cranes or what it is um, as kind of hanging flags. Uh, oh, yeah, that's and, clever. Um, the thing why I wanted to do this is um, because I think it's, it's, yeah, well, it looks good, but it was also because of to honor the king when I was uh, in Thailand. He, uh, who unfortunately died straight away before we came. Oh, yeah. Um, and they were like everywhere, like everywhere hanging around. Obviously, they've been black when I was there, but I wanted to try to get in with those colors of um, Thailand. And I think it worked kind of good because it really gives like a feeling that you're in a Thailandish park, which was the end. It does kind of make me wonder, why didn't you use the uh, the ropes that are in the Western set? Because there are ropes that look very similar in the Western set. Yeah, they do, but they were too big. Like, um, like ah, the right. smallest one are those which I have uh, put down as hanging ones on, on the pillars. Uh, but for the middle part, mm -hmm. they, they've been too big. Like, they would have been going into the floor and it kind of looks strange. So I tried the different way. All right, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And then I was like kind of grabbing this lantern kind of stuff, which I prepared um, 
before we had those winter pieces and now something happened which I actually haven't had before because I thought okay now we have those pretty uh, yeah, brilliant new pieces and let's get them in and make an even more fancy uh, lantern out of it and I must admit that I haven't found a way to do this and so I went straight up with the old version because I liked it mm -hmm. more than the new, new version. The only thing I did. I, I kind of had this as well, to be honest. Like, some of the other things that I've made with a lot of wooden detailing and I've tried to use the Christmas baubles to actually decorate them a bit as well, it never quite seems to fit. And I think it's really a texture kind of problem. Like, the, the pieces that you try to put into it have such a completely different texture, whereas the rest of the lantern uses all of the small wooden details that it's kind of doesn't really yeah. fit together yeah, as well. Yeah, and I'm afraid we are already in the last uh, part of the video. I was kind of making this little uh, viewpoint, which uh, I've also put down uh, a screenshot in the at the end of the video, um, where you can look straight away to the Buddha, which was in this time uh, really fully intentional. And uh, I, I kind of feel that it is pretty nice because the coaster is going really nicely alongside this little... Yeah, area. this is amazing. Um, but it was also the last thing I've done. And this is kind of the stage which you have to build on, Sylph. Yep, I have no idea how I'm going to continue with all of these garlands that you've made and even find out a way to respect it and go further with it. But um, I think it looks beautiful. I think it gives a very good head start for me. And um, yeah, we'll see what I build in the next episode, because I have no idea. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure it will be awesome, like you are. I, I will always refer to this now. <laughs> 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 um, but anyway, uh, thanks for being here on my channel. And You're welcome. Yeah, and um, I would say um, goodbye to all of you listening to us. It was again like a little bit of a podcast thing over two, two Yeah, podcasts. more or less. I, I remember last time we said we might as well start a podcast at this point. I'm not sure where I'm even going to find the time or the topics to do that kind of thing. But at least for the time being, this is this is a really fun sort of podcast yeah. to do. So uh, it's really awesome. All right. Yeah, it's awesome. Definitely this. And I hope that we are going to do it again on your next video. But uh, until then, guys, have a nice day and see you in the next episode at Surf Channel. Bye bye. See you later, everybody.